Hi, welcome back to my YouTube channel. And if you don't know me, I'm Koya Danya, and I make self improvement and productive TV videos. In this episode, I'm going to discuss this book, which I will recommend to you all. This book is called The Art of Psychological Warfare How to Skillfully Influence People Undetected and How to Mentally Subdue Your Enemies in Stealth Mode by Michael T. Stevens. This book has introduction, five chapter, and which are chapter 1 history of psychological warfare, chapter 2 how to read people, chapter 3 how to be likable, chapter 4 getting people to agree with you, chapter 5 the battle of wills and chapter 6 the psychological text. So in introduction Michael T. Stevens explains how this book will tell you how powerful people control the world and it can be anyone from politicians to religious person. Any normal person can learn these skills which is great because I am on YouTube and I want to influence people so I can be successful. Don't take it wrong, I will not use this secret in wrong way and I leave it to you how you are going to use it as an advantage. So let's get to the chapter 1 of History of Psychological Warfare. In 1959 and 1960, Henry Alexander Moore participated in CIA project MK Ultra. These were brutal psychological experiments which caused problems in society. These tested people under very stressful environment. The volunteers were students. These students were told to write a philosophy of their own life and things they were bleak. Then these students were sent to our room. Then these students were sent to our room. These students were told that this was a debating room, but in reality, a person they encountered, a trained interrogator whose job was to use students' own beliefs and attack brutally any way possible of those students' beliefs. Since the experiment was put stress on students, they also became traumatized. It caused big problems. One of the students, Ted Kaziansky, who was a brilliant mathematician, became a bomber, a serial killer who waged terrorist campaign of bombs against university from the year 1978 to 1995 before finally be captured. The second story on history of psychological warfare is our famous actor Benedict Cumberbatch. You may know him as a Doctor Strange or Marvels. His movies have been recently very successful. So in South Africa he was shooting a movie and car he was riding was attacked by a gang of armed thieves and he was kidnapped but he used defensive psychological methods and talked his way out from them. He uses acting and persuade them that he is very famous actor and which can cause war. Those thieves left him nearby a village, unharmed. Now this is called acting for you. If you have watched till now, you may have realized this book is not another, it has a lot of secrets you should. So now you know some history of psychological warfare. Now let's get to the chapter 2. It is all about how to read people. Now you may think reading people, yes, it is very important because you are in a business trying to convince people or dominating. So how can we read people? Well, we can read them through their body language. And so many people don't know, body language is also a way of non-verbal communication. And it is not only important to read people but to control your own body language to have the desired effect. So how we can learn to read people? Well. Recognizing when your opponent is resistant, seeing when a person is vulnerable, or spotting fear or anxiety, exploiting signals sent by your target, and adjusting your own body language and posture strategy. Well, there can be books that can be written on body language, and we are going to discuss some examples, like adjusting your glasses. This is a sign that a person is paying more attention. Face palm, it is very famous on the internet. Clapping a hand to hand to your face near the eye. This is an expression that was stupid and I cannot believe it. Looking away, avoiding the eye gaze is the classic gesture of I don't like that. Cross arm, this is a universal symbol, I am not accepting this. So the key takeaway for this chapter is use your body language to size up your opponent, adjust your own body language to influence your opponent, and keep an awareness of your opponent reacts to body language, vocabulary, and body language. Now let's start with chapter 3, how to be likable. When in last chapter we learned how to read people, but in this chapter we are going to learn how to likewise look and how to present yourself. Why should we care how we look? Well, because we do not know how to leave no path to victory untaken. If a target thinks you are a good person, you are good looking and gives you favor, it is a victory. It also helps you social 
socialize. By the way, socializing is very important nowadays. People use social media, which is not real socializing. People need to go out, talk to people in real life. If you want to learn how to socialize with people, go simply join a club or a group of an organization or find a hobby interest and group associated with it and join it. Find this group who go out in public and meet people and help them with activities. Find this group who go out in public and meet people and help them with activities. And you will learn how to socialize with people. Do not go to bars or clubs. These are just traps to spend money. You can also join local charity and donate your time helping other people. It is very attractive to other people to watch you helping poor people. Well, to be likable, you also need charisma. And to people listen to you, it is very important to have this trait. Here are some tips to learn how to improve your charisma. Smile. Yes, that is the number one tip for charisma. Be the ray of sunshine and everybody will gravitate to you. Don't take yourself seriously. Be relaxed, be casual about yourself. Project your image that you are just trying to get nearby. Never criticize others unless it feeds directly into a current point of tactical warfare. Be the kind of person who follows the golden rule. If you cannot say something nice, don't say anything at all. Compliment costs you nothing and yet people are stingy with them. Give other people your full attention and give them compliments. So the key takeaway in chapter is Develop your charisma to make yourself naturally charming and influential person. You need to look confident, have something in your life, go out, get some adventure in your life and look confident. Dress for success. It does not matter if you don't have a million dollar budget for expensive clothes. It's about being neat and tidy. Taking care of yourself will help others care about you. There is also a true adage, if you dress like a winner, world will treat you like one. Have a sense of humor. Nothing is more disarming than good laugh. Learn to make people laugh without making yourself like a joker. Now let's start chapter 4. Chapter 4 is all about getting people to agree with you. Convincing people to agree with you is the ultimate psychological domination. You should be working in the art of persuasion. You should not be shy person and you should be a confident person because shy person does not have any traits of art of persuasion. Confidence should be real not fake. And showing off should have an attitude that what are advocating. Confidence should be real, not fake. And showing off should have an attitude that what you are advocating is the right thing in the world. So use neuro linguistic programming. Let's consider an overweight person who is obese not because of medical condition, but is simply eating junk food. And if that person checks their weight, looks in the bathroom mirror, and say, "Look at me, I'm fat and ugly. I will never lose this weight." That person has shut themselves in their prison of their own negativity. Instead of that person said, "I'm going to live like a healthy person and exercise," that means that person has boosted its confidence, and you can do it too. Phrasing thing in a way that your mindset will change will make you successful in the future. Try this method to get people away with you. Build a report by simply copying whatever your target does. If they pace, you pace. If they scratch, you scratch. This is a subtle signal you send to other person that we are same people. Try to put your ideas in the conversation. Use smooth words like because then likewise. Guide this technique by watching people response. If they do not agree, back off and then agree with them and then take a new pattern to win the conversation. You can use this technique which will work like pacing. With step by step, you mirroring your target body language. Try to adjust the tempo. See if you can speed the pace of your step. Take them quicken their pace. Cue them with the no scratch or adjusting your legs while sitting and see if they copy that. If they do, you are the puppet master now. Use normalization. Use normalization method. Got a radical idea? Start by proposing even more radical idea. Children know this trick. If you want a puppy, first ask your parent for a pony and when they say no, bargain with the puppy instead. It is a logic trap. Ask for something they do not want to give you, then ask something less that they can afford. And last is anchoring. This is where you stick your idea. 
into another one they already agree with or stop where we insinuate our own ideas into things they already agree with you politicians anchor their plan for war in the idea of national defense so there are four key takeaways from this chapter learn from salesmen in persuading other to your bidding or to get somebody to do you a big favor ask them for a small favor first make it easy for people to do your bidding and use salesman tactic to sway people under your influence now let's get to the chapter 5 the winning the battle of wills before we move on to the darker psychological warfare we will provide this section of intermediate psychological tactics like verbal judo which is a defense mechanism which have four points like avoidance recognizing a conflict early and heading it off before it becomes one withdrawing retreating on a position temporarily until a more advantageous time deflecting changing the topic or focus of conflict compromise making a deal that advantageous to both parties flirting politeness is a big tactic to take advantage of people people are social creatures and so they have a vulnerability to exploit they do not want to seen as rude so they are more likely to comply with your plans if you can utilize their good manners in the bargain various psychological studies show that simply supplying a reason along with the request make more likely to be granted even with the reason is ridiculous next time you want to cut a line for a copier try asking can i cut in here just need to make few copies so does everyone so does everyone else but certainly the fact that you have called attention to your own need make it way more take advantage of people natural desires to be polite while influencing them use people desire to remain polite to influence them in doing what you want them to do by making that the most polite response and now let's get to the final chapter of this book chapter 6 in chapter 6 psychological attacks this chapter is going to be very challenging we will talk about levels of violence that are at least condemned by society if not illegal at some even against international law so so without further ado here are number of psychological attacks which can be applied in various contexts number 1 gaslighting gaslighting is form of mental abuse in which victim is tricked into doubting their own sanity its name come from the 1938 stage play where a man slowly drives his wife insane just by disturbing her reality an example would be if a group of people in your home decide to take something of yours when you are not looking then when you ask where it was everyone would conspire to pretend as it was never existed and you were make it up or might decide to haunt somebody with a guilty of conscience by making ghostly sound effects and unexpected startling events to convince them that ghost was haunting them manipulating spouse and parents do this kind of stunt with impunity never to is catfishing anyone who use internet is familiar with catfishing all it takes is the creation of fake social media profile through which you interact with someone else while convincing them that they are taking with real person in simple word it is lying Online dating sites are full with scammers. These people make fake profile and send romantic come on through dating network enticing potential victims to get involved. The number 3 is propaganda. Our first two examples are all about the individual target, but propaganda is the same idea targeting the general public or at least a large target demographic. all governments in the both war and peace as well all religious and all corporation engage in propaganda of one kind or another there are no exceptions so whether using propaganda in psychological warfare or defending against it you should know that propaganda uses logical fallacies to make convincing claims here is a brief on list of more common logical fallacies used in war time propaganda ad hominem attacking the target instead of what they do or say appeal to crowd placement we are all in this together rousing the troops towards the goal the aim is always a call to action appeal to fear the enemy is always painted as a scary immediate threat more high ground of course our side is always the side of justice and freedom isn't it misleading witness using girlish and shocking deceptions to oversell your case and then comes brainwashing 
Brainwashing is the darkest and most damaging form of psychological domination. A brainwashed person is the puppet, is the puppet of their own master. No longer thinking person or their own. Brainwashing and cult follows a very rigorous pattern. There is a method established by all such person through reform. Fundamental changes to the way of target things. See earlier sections on propaganda lies lighting, then comes the thought reform. Fundamental changes so they way the target things. See earlier section of propaganda gaslighting and such isolation. This is the most important factor. In order to control someone completely, you must cut out them off from all outside influence. Frequent cult members are forbidden from watching TV or from communicating with their family or from co-workers. Induced dependency, making the cult leader the sole source of livelihood. Cult members are forbidden from having their own money and must live with life with the cult leader, only eating what they allow. Dread. Ruling through fear is the key tool of cult brainwashing. The cult leader convinces the members that there is a great threat to them outside the cult compound. The cult leader also harshly punishes all disobedience, demands of dedication. Finally, the cult member must pledge their lives, brain and blood to the cause of the cult leader. They dedicate every walking hour to the serving their leader's mission. Keeping people in cult is the ultimate psychological warfare. It is also beyond the skill set of most people, which a great blessing. However, brainwashing is a bit more common, but also far more involving than the most people would undertake. So I hope you have enjoyed and been enlightened by our tour of the world of psychological warfare. I hope you learned some dirty tricks so you can save yourself if someone is trying to use you for all reasons. And I hope you do not try these things in future. I believe psychological warfare can be used for right reasons like police interrogation, people to find the guilty. I believe government is doing well than using psychological tactics in the course of warfare if it is being used for good. Remember, also many people try these techniques but do not know what they are called. Your co-worker might joke with you while competing for your promotion. Your boss might be looking for a way to bypass your promotion for his nephew or children over you. Your phone company service representative might be trying to pressure sell you into a new data plan, but you will be wise to all of it. But you will be wise to all of it. We have done our job at all. In the end, I will say thank you for watching this video and if you got any value from this video, subscribe for watching this video and if you want to help other people to know about psychological warfare, share with other people so they can get this video. Thank you. Goodbye.